Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, Eagle fans, let me tell you something. There's an old saying, he who laughs, laughs, laughs the loudest. Right now, the Eagles fans, oh, they're feeling themselves. Oh, my God, they are feeling themselves. They are going crazy right now. They think that, that right now, they've already won the Super Bowl. In their mind, there's no point in even playing the season. You know, they made the trade yesterday for the safety. You know, they end up bringing in all these different players and stuff. They they are the all-star team and things. And now the Cowboys, you know, they, they've literally joked the Cowboys about Amari Cooper. Now, let, I just finished talking to my man, the mailman, Brian Green. I keep telling him he needs to have a, a YouTube channel because he's got a lot of knowledge and stuff and um, definitely enjoy having conversations with him. And he brought up a, a, an interesting point. One of these things that we have to get over is, and, and I need to do, do it myself, is get over the Amari Cooper situation. You know, I'm assuming that the Cowboys shopped Amari Cooper around, that they tried to get a deal for him, and they were only able to get something. And in a way, I think, as we all know, things happen to the Cowboys that don't happen to others. Sometimes you feel like there's a narrative against the Cowboys, you know? And in a way, I almost feel like the Cowboys are kind of black, blackballed. Nobody's going to really give the Cowboys a deal, you know? Cow, you know, when the Cowboys come and say, hey, you know, man, we ain't, we're going to lowball you. We know you're desperate. You want to get rid of them. It, it might be, you know, maybe if another team had Amari Cooper was trying to trade them, they'd get better compensation. But because it's the Cowboys, nah, man. You know, sometimes there can be that underlining thing where we're not saying you shouldn't deal with the Cowboys, but don't give any good deals to the Cowboys because they're hated. I, I'm just, just saying that that might have been the best deal that they could have gotten, you know. And in some instances, you, you look at, say, um, the Raiders having two years ago drafted um, Alex Leatherhood or Leatherhead I, I, or Leatherface. I call him uh, Leatherwood. Leatherwood. I keep calling it, want to say Leatherface. They drafted that guy number 17 overall, and two years later, he's gone. He's gone. They had to release him. They got nothing for a first-round pick. So, you know, it, it happens. It happens. So we need to move on from that. The Eagles, on the other hand, you know, like I said, they're, oh, they're feeling themselves, hey, you know, Jalen Rhaegar, you know, we, we got a, a seventh round and, and a, a, a fifth that can be a conditional fourth. That's better than the Cowboys. Well, true. It is. But – as everybody is going through and talking about the Eagles, you know, getting, a, well, they're getting this guy and that guy. It's kind of out of necessity because you start looking at a lot of the players that they've drafted and that they thought were going to be great aren't. Carson Wentz, with all the capital that they spent on him, he's no longer there. Now, they at least got a good trade to get rid of him, but had they gotten a quarterback that was good like we did with Dak – that's been there the whole time, they'd be in a better shape. You know, had they done better with J.J. Arthea Whiteside, that they wouldn't have to give him away for a ham sandwich. You know, trading a picks, and then you traded that guy, I mean, excuse me, a player, a D-back, and then you trade him to the Texans and swap a pick or something or other. I mean, you know, that's a number two that you messed up on that you got to make up for. You know, you end up getting guys like Andre Dillard who can't crack the lineup. And, you know, as much as you say, oh, we want a number one. Yeah, you may want a number one, but he's not worth the number one. With as needy as tackles are, nobody offered you jack for him because he's ass. So they have to go out and pick up guys because they don't pick up their own players. I know Cowboy fans, you know, you're pissed off right now. You're definitely pissed off. I feel you. But last year this time, we were pissed off too. Because we were in the same boat. We didn't sign big name free agents. And this morning I was saying, when we signed J. Ron Curse, J. Ron Curse was thought to be a special teamer and position flex. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> 
nobody thought that guy would get the green dot, that that guy would be the field general out there, and he was. So now the Cowboys, who every draft pick that they've had over the last two years is on the roster. I don't know that any other team can say that. We'll find out if that's a good thing or not. But when you hit on a Micah Parsons, yeah, you're doing something right there. When you hit on a Diggs, yeah. If you hit on a Diggs, you don't have to go out and get a Slay. If you hit out hit on a CeeDee Lamb, you don't have to go ahead and get a A.J. Brown. If you end up hitting on players, on offensive linemen, you don't have to go get others. And apparently the Cowboys, you know, we're not there every day. They believe that Tyler Smith is the guy. And so now Eagle fans, oh, they're joking. Oh, man, you're going for Jason Peters? Now, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to, hopefully the NFL police won't get me. But what I'm going to do is, this is a uh, last year. This is last year. Now, Jason Peters, we haven't signed him, first of all. First of all, we're bringing him in for physical. This is last year of him playing at 39 years old for the Bears. Okay, so you can kind of watch him. You can see what he did. You know, Jason Peters is always good for for an offsides a game. Um, he'll miss a you know block here or there. He is forty years old, but understand the Cowboys aren't looking to bring him in to be the starter. What they're doing is they're looking to bring him in as a swing tackle, an insurance policy. And in case shit happens, if let's say, you know, right now the starting lineup is Tyler Smith, Zach Martin, Biotish, Connor Williams, and um, Terrence Steele. That's the starting lineup right there. If shit happens, you have Jason Peters who can play left tackle if he has to. And then you could say Tyler Smith could go to guard. If Connor Williams, I mean, Connor McGovern goes out, okay? If Tyler, I mean, if uh, Terrence Steele goes out, then you have Jason Peters come in for him. This is a guy to fill a need. Now, I'm looking at Jason Peters on here on these clips, okay? He can still pull. Look, at he's still, big guy still pulling, and, and he's pushing people out the way, okay? This is last season, okay? This is last season, <clears throat> I say that looks better than what I saw from Josh Ball against third stringers. I'm not going to say that this is a long-term solution, that this is you know our, our next start and tackle. This is a guy who only got $1.75 million last year. It's chump change. And here's what you can also get with a guy like this. This is a guy who's an eight-time pro bowler, I think five-time all-pro, a guy who understands how to play football, understands technique, and can mentor Tyler Smith as well as some of these other guys. He's been there. And I dare say, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But the fact that he's at least coming in here, means that he's interested in at least signing. And I have to think that if he's playing against the Eagles or Eagle games, that that could be actually a big value. Now, you can say, I'm just trying to spin it, you know, make, make shit shine and all that. You know, I'm going to be positive because at least the Cowboys are trying to do something. I would say I would rather have Jason Peters than in the Cowboys trying to go ahead and trade something for Andre Dillard, a guy who, you know, are we saying that Andre Dillard is going to be okay to protect Dak's blind side and I'm going to have to give up draft compensation for him? Because if he was good, he'd be starting. Or somebody would have traded for him if the market was there. The market wasn't there. And I know you can say the same thing about Jason Peters, but you know what? That's him right there going against Tampa Bay. And I dare say... That's better than Chaz Green. That's better than Chaz Green there, guys. So, understand, this is not to be a starter. This is to get us some depth 
on the line. This is to get a swing tackle. This is to try and get a mentor for the offensive line. And if we're only talking about a million and a half, by all means, if he's in shape. Now, what he said is he has been working out, staying in shape. He doesn't know if and when he'll get another um, deal, but he wants to have one more crack at trying to get another ring. Um, So if he is in shape, no injuries, by all means, I, I ain't mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Eagle fans, you know, like I said, they're feeling themselves. Uh, They can be happy about all the moves they can make. But at some point, all this joy and happiness that you have of the players that you sign, they got to be able to fit your system, and they have to learn your system and be able to play as a cohesive unit. And in today's NFL, today's NFL, where practices are few and far between, where getting in shape, you don't really have much time to do. I'm looking at the Eagles, and what might be their Achilles heel is the fact that they have brought in so many players from other places and still doing so. If these guys are on the same page, if these guys make mental mistakes because they don't know the book and haven't practiced and have muscle memory, that's going to open you up to actually losing. So am I ready to give up the division to the Eagles? Hell no. No. We're going to see what we're going to see. And um, I ended up doing a video last week about Jason Peters and talking about him as one of the possible replacements. He's definitely better than a Nate Soldier. Um, Eric Fisher coming off of injuries. You know, he played – Nate Soldier only played – I'm sorry, not Nate Soldier. Um – Eric Fisher, because everybody's saying Eric Fisher, go get Eric Fisher. Well, Eric Fisher was coming off an Achilles tear the year before. They had to ramp him up slow. He played good for about six or seven games, but then had shoulder injuries and knee injuries. Jason Peters was able to play 15 games last year. And those that say, man, you're going for old ass, you know, uh, Jason Peters. Well, you know, try and get Wadsworth. Well, uh, Andrew Wadsworth is um, still property of the Rams. So if he unretired, the Rams would have to be able to make a trade for him, and we know how trades work for the Cowboys. And he's 40 years old as well. All right, that's what I got for you. You know, feel free, Eagle fans. We know you're living you're living in here right now, and I get it. You know, <laughs> I get it. You're having a ball. Have a ball, you know. I, I, I got no problem with that, you know. But when you lose, and you will, Make sure you have the same energy and that you still come around because I know how you cockroaches are fair weather fans, right? And uh, we'll probably see this by the end of the season if it all falls apart. I fire Howie. Fucking fire him. Motherfucker! Stupid motherfucker! What an idiot! What an idiot! Dallas has Amari Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver. Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson. He's ass. He's stupid. I fire his ass. I fire his ass. I mean, how he's got to be stupid. What are you doing? 